Got it. There you go. Okay, guys, I know this is not the, I don't want to give you a sermon or anything like that. Uh, this one was more <laughs> like I wanted to give you uh, my love and my appreciation and uh, my sincere sort of, uh, should I say, how inspired I am to look at this group. Okay. I think pretty much every one of you, I have uh, trained personally. Literally, it's almost feels sometimes like I'm this grandfather seeing the grandkid uh, <laughs> graduating, graduating from high school or something. <laughs> so it feels like that sometimes. Um, but I think it is uh, more true than uh, not true in terms of uh, like the running journey. You guys were all babies in running, if not everybody, but definitely most of you. And I've seen you actually mature as a runner, first mature as a, uh, as a long distance runner, and then mature as a half marathoner, and then maturing now, going to mature and graduate as a full marathoner in many cases. And uh, it's not, uh, I, the first message I wanted to give all of you is that what you guys are setting out to do this weekend is not a normal thing. You know, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know, but if you are on runner side, um, <laughs> running the 20 miles, it seems, or 11 miles, it seems like just a regular normal thing. You know, and nobody cares about it. I just ran 11 miles. But uh, unfortunately, yeah, that's, I think it's more unfortunate, especially for the first timers here who is doing the 18 miles and 20 miles, especially in full marathon. That's just, I mean, I don't, I, I'm loss of words, but uh, it's just incredible, guys. You know, first time when I did a 20 miler, of course, at that time I had nobody around me. I was the only one. I li literally had an ability, I patted myself on the back for doing something completely out of sync uh, with my wildest imagination and I was that's another thing I was not able to walk out of the bed for the next four days after that because I trained bad I didn't have any uh, sort of proper uh, nutrition recommendation all that so I think you guys have done you are, have already done something phenomenal okay so I want to make sure that I remind you that today you know, as you head to the weekend and some of you have gotten injured, some of you have gone through some pretty tough uh, storylines. Okay. So that's the first thing I want you all to remember, uh, the journey. Um, the second thing I wanted to say from a messaging standpoint is that uh, race day, we always discussed, right? What you, you can only control, what uh, inputs and levers that you have in your hand. Okay. So race day, who knows what will happen? Race day, uh, the, I heard that whether there could be some rains expected during uh, uh, that day. Hi, Poonam, by the way, long time I'm seeing you. Why don't you all open, your, open up your cameras? I want to see you guys. It's been so long since I've seen you. Um, but, uh, you know, race day, you don't control many things. And some of you, I know, are going to do it for the first time in a, a race setting. So you will have um, what can, what I call it as the God forces. That means those things that you've never experienced, suddenly you start experiencing it in the uh, in the race. It could be positive, it could be negative. Suddenly you'll have too much of enthusiasm. And you have never experienced a pain and you're experiencing, you have started experiencing it, you know, in the race setting. Uh, or suddenly you are running really well and then, uh, so many, many things like this will happen. So that's why we have discussed this. You're all problem solvers. Okay. So you got to listen to your body, listen to what uh, inputs you're getting and accordingly solve the problem. There is no one cookie cutter approach to this. You, The only thing you should know is there will be some problem that will come. You know, there will be, there's no doubt about it. I've never seen a single partner <laughs> who just came and said that it went exactly to my plans. As a, that, that is just a imagination. Maybe even Kipchoge is a great example for all of you now. The great Kipchoge had a problem <laughs> in Boston Marathon, which he has trained for five months. And what did he say? It's so perfect timing for all of us. What did he say? Some days is not for you. You just have to accept it and do the best you can on that particular day. Okay. He was not disappointed or anything. It was just like, you know, sometimes, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to the interview, he said that, you know, sometimes winning is great, but what is also great is just participating in an event like this. This is Kipchoge speaking. 
Okay, so if Kipchoge can feel like that, we all can also feel the same thing. That just participating in an event where you have 35 of our fellow RHWB runners running and all of us going for our individual milestones that uh, is etched in the in the in the you know annals of history or in other words facebook forever is something that we all should be proud of <laughs> so I, I want you that's my second message here which is remember whichever way it happens it's a great thing and you need to be a problem solver on the race day so that is item number two uh, item number three that i wanted to tell you is that even within the scope of runner side this time has been the especially those first time full marathoners who have signed up uh, for this uh, for this race. Uh, Anand, remind me how many full marathoners are there from our group for uh, this race? I think, I think it's about ten to eleven. That's what I'm not wrong. Yeah, that was my estimate too. I think about ten to eleven full marathoners are there. And a total of what thirty five? Is that right? Uh, thirty seven. From... Thirty seven that we know according to the list, but there might be some people who have registered without a team who have not joined the group, you know. Yeah. But uh, right now it's 37. It's a large number, right? Thirty And out of that 37, I think if I'm uh, not mistaken, about 20 or so would be first-timers. As in first time doing their half marathon or first time doing their full marathon. Okay. So that's a big number. Like uh, our entire second season number was 22. So you are looking at my entire second season running <laughs> this weekend. Okay, so I think uh, it's a very special thing. So especially to those first timers, I got to tell you, um, you are you can almost think of your life as pre this weekend and post this weekend. It's like pre BC and AD kind of a scenario, you know. And uh, if if you're a first time full marathoner, I can guarantee you. I, I'm sure Bobby will support me when I say this. I can guarantee you, first time when you cross a full marathon, you've reached one of the pinnacles of human <laughs> sort of endurance challenge. Okay? You got to know that. Unfortunately, RSWB depreciates these values very... Uh, <laughs> 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 very, uh, very casually depreciates value like this on full marathon. First time I finished a full marathon for the next two years, I was proud of myself. Okay. <laughs> so two years I'm talking about. Here you are, uh, first time full marathon finishes it and immediately talk about, okay, can I do a 10K race? Hey, dude, enjoy the full marathon, dude. <laughs> the win that you just had, like the, the race that you just completed. Okay. Um, so that's what I would say uh, as a point number three. It's a historic cohort of runner side. And I'm uh, just uh, can't wait for uh, for all of you to sort of uh, you know inspire others by your way you carry yourself. Um, item number four, tactically, I heard that it's going to rain. Uh, is that still the weather forecast for Saturday uh, for Sunday? I think it has improved a little bit during the race time. I guess right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, now it's still showing now it is... says afternoon rains, but I'm not sure. Oh, then it's even better. Then probably yeah. it will be a nice cloud cover or whatever. Yeah, direct sun may not have, uh, might not be shining on your head or something. That means it's even better. Okay, but in case it's going to rain, uh, my suggestion is as follows: There are multiple ways people address rain. Right, the one way that I feel personally doesn't work is covering your shoes with plastic, having this plastic garbage bag around you, and multiple layers and all that. All that is at the end of the day. What are you trying to do? You're wanting to make sure you don't go on to get wet, right? I'm assuming that's what you're trying to do. But I guarantee you, if it is raining, you will get wet, whether you like it or not. Only thing is, why do you want to get wet in uh, mile three or you want to get in mile seven? That's all. The problem is when you get wet, in mile 12 is where the problem is going to start. When you know, you're getting exhausted, your shoe is heavy, your socks is heavy, all that stuff. So that you, you don't have a choice. So my suggestion is enjoy the rain. I ran DC Marathon, not in rain. It was like a hurricane. And not only in a hurricane, it was like a river flowing on the road. I cannot tell you. I Maybe I, I'll send you a picture. It was like a river flowing on the road. Okay. And I had the shoe and it was <laughs> it was like water, river flowing, entering my shoe and getting out of the shoe. That's how it was. And not for like a couple of minutes. 
I'm talking about miles together, almost maybe eight or nine miles. Okay, and it, I initially felt like the world is crying for me in my, that was my initial image that, you know, why am I <laughs> subjecting myself to this? Why am I subjecting myself to this? And it was like, God is crying for me. These are all the images that went through me. By mile 10, I said, nobody's crying for me. I better take care of myself. Otherwise, I am screwed. <laughs> you know, as so I got into my problem solving mode. And the problem solving mode was very simple. Just every, the, you know, uh, 0.8 miles when I do bank run, I remove it and like, ring the socks and put it back again and go, keep going. This is all I was doing. Then I entered the, uh, what is called as a, what is it called? Um, what mile is it? Uh, there is a mile 18 or something where it was called the, the fallen soldiers. Pictures will be kept on both sides of the mile. It's a very sacred mile of that uh, JCM where you, uh, not JCM, uh, the, uh, that, you know, the DC marathon. So you go through that, you are already exhausted. And you go through this and you see pictures of fallen soldiers with some, you know, this it, it's like almost running through a symmetry kind of a thing. Okay. And you're running mile 18, you're already a little bit exhausted. And that time it's raining. That was really took me to a different level. It was almost like, you know, the world is crying for these fallen soldiers. I actually felt, okay, the ray, uh, God is crying for these fallen soldiers and not for my plight. And it inspired me. Okay, it really inspired me. And then after I went through that uh, mile, I realized that what rain? What the hell am I talking about? Is rain a big deal here? We have fallen soldiers dead. And here I am like feeling self-pity for myself because I have to run in rain. That was it. After mile 19, I just enjoyed the rain. It was just, then I realized it's all mental at the end of the day. Okay, so that's my suggestion for you on rain. You cannot really protect yourself from rain if it's going to rain through the whole day. And if you wear extra clothing and all that, no, it will become super uncomfortable very soon because everything will get wet and you'll become very warm and then either you throw it off. You, I've seen all combinations. That's why I'm telling you. The best combination is have something just to protect yourself from cold till the race start and then that's it. You have signed up for a full marathon. That means you've signed up for pain. This is one additional pain that you get used to and solve the problem. You know what I mean? That would be the approach that works finally, practically for what needs to happen. Uh, mentally, you also need to adjust your PR, uh, sorry, uh, your personal sort of uh, um, target. Hey. Yeah. If you think you're 1030, uh, conditions are bad. Think Kipchoge, you are a Kipchoge, but today you are Kipchoge of Boston. So I will go like, uh, you know, 20% slower and just get it done. You understood? The Just so another secret I'll tell you, even if you finish five minutes lower than what you originally thought, the medal will be the exactly the same, just so you know. So, <laughs> so, so, so that, that secret now that I've told you, you will be, and not only the medal will be exactly the same, <laughs> your runner's way will be exactly the same. We all will be exactly the same proud of you, especially me. You will all get the call from me for your uh, finishing your full marathon, uh, especially the ones that are directly under me, you will get a call from me. So all of that will be exactly the same. So keep that in, take the pressure out of it. And then you will begin to realize the third pillar of our club, which is having fun. If you come out of tomorrow uh, on Saturday, uh, Sunday, telling me that Bala, here is the deal. I had X as my target. I did it X minus 15 minutes. Okay. I struggled in the last three miles. But when I finished it and I look back, I had the greatest fun. That means you are golden. If you come back and tell me, I had X as the target. I finished it X minus two. But I had no clue that I was running and the Statue of Liberty was right next to me. I didn't even see it. I didn't even see the runners who are around me, never talked to anybody. I finished the finish line and I was so exhausted. I just came home and slept. You are a loser. Let me tell you this straight away. So I want you to be a winner and not a loser. Okay. You better enjoy the day. Okay. And that's who we are. It's about enjoying the day. And if it have a PR, nothing like it. Okay. So that, those are the sort of four messages I had for you. As I said, it is just a, an... I just wanted to say hi to everybody and tell you how proud I am. Uh, maybe if there are any tactical or any questions or any comments you have for each other, for me, this might be a great time.
So um, we've talked about the rain, but uh, looks like you know it probably the sun will be there in the morning. Yeah. So it's like just your normal stuff, like uh, water dumping every x uh, every x number months. of miles. Yes, every, every two, two miles. miles. Yes, even if you're feeling cold, don't mm -hmm. worry, just dump. Even if you're feeling cold, dump water on your head, especially if sun is expected. Okay, it'll it'll make a huge difference after 15th mile or something. Okay, and I'm assuming uh, you know you you saw the the doc that we shared in terms of race day preparation, in terms of the the material like you know chest guard for men, uh, salt tablets. I'm assuming don't right. underestimate the use of salt tablets for tomorrow, and also note that you guys are trained. Like you guys are trained assassins, okay? You guys are not like some random people coming for a street fight. Another, you know, mentally you got to think in that angle. You are not random people just coming and picking up whatever sword you got and just got into a fight. No, 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 no. You are trained assassins. You're special ops, okay? You're special ops forces. You know exactly what you're getting into. You have been trained exactly for this. Okay, and I'm not even exaggerating, right? We've been on a 16-week journey. Everything that you know of has been discussed, broken into many pieces. You have the benchmarks, people before you have run, people after you are getting used to it. So you, you, can't, you can't get better than this. you got to trust that. Okay, you absolutely, and Bobby, I hope you under you agree to what I'm saying because you have run separately and alone as well. This is the best you can get in terms of preparation. I, I'm not saying about myself or like about our club. It's not about that. I'm saying the general preparation you've made. This is the best of the best. So you just go, trust in your training, have a smile on your face, be that Buddha I told you before the race. Just go and get shit done. And that's it. After that, have a couple of beers and have a great time and become the inspirer for the rest of the people around you. That's it. That's a simple homework I'm giving you right now. Nothing more, nothing less. So, so I have a question about the salt tablet. As a half marathoner, I never took salt tablet. Yeah. Okay. So is it is it so now after I heard uh, last time it was too late for me to try because my long runs were over. So I've been drinking that uh, LMNT water. It has that has salt content in it, right? So I can yeah. drink that. Right? It should be good. Uh, so you're again running a half only, right, Nilima? Just to yeah. confirm. So yeah, this is more so for uh, for uh, full marathons, full marathons full. because the salt content in your body gets depleted mm -hmm. when you're running, especially in heat. Mm -hmm. But you have enough salt resources in your body, like a okay. reserve of salt in your body, that by the time you get to that level, no, where it'll start impacting your muscle, you've already finished your race, unless you plan Finish. to run four and a half okay. hours. If you don't, I know. So you are good shape. Mm -hmm. It's basically for runners okay. to run more than three hours. So if you're a half marathoner who are expected to run more than three hours, then you should expect salt depletion by mile 12. And then you need a salt tablet. Or any of those drinks okay. that you're telling, no, is not enough okay. to uh, to sort of, you know, take care of the deficiency of salt. Okay. Okay. Uh, Coach, yeah. Hello. I do fall in that category of three hours. Yep. So should I start taking yes, them? Yes, 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 yes. You should. You should. Okay. Okay. Three or three to four salt tablets, I would suggest. Mile three, mile six, and maybe three, maybe three. Six, I've never seven. had them before, so it's okay to try now. Okay. It's okay. Ideally, you should you should have, but salt is not the same as uh, the goo scenario, you know. So, so you can have it on mile three, six, and nine. Nothing will happen. Oh, thank you, uh, Coach. Let me ask you this question: Is there something like too much salt? Because you know, especially for full marathoners, when you add up the uh, sodium we're getting from the gels plus if you have some electrolyte water or Gatorade that is sodium and then the salt tablets probably have 250 milligrams of sodium each you know each pill yeah. right I mean so when you add up all of that is there is there something called too much salt that can actually make you thirsty or okay. uh, you know uh, you, you see what I'm saying so or, or is, is, it doesn't matter so two questions, two answers to it. One, I actually had a specific chat with Coach Shalini on, on this, uh, Dr. Shalini on this one, exactly this question. So she said there's nothing called too much salt. If at all there is too much salt, kidney will basically, your kidney will take it out and that's it. Nothing will really, uh, it's not like, you know, too much sugar and your blood sugar goes up and all that kind of scenario is not going to happen. That's point number one. Mm -hmm. Mathematically, when you look at it, right, you need 22,500 mg of salt for the race, for full marathon, if it is a five hours full marathon. Just a simple math, this is how you should be thinking about, buddy. 
2500 mg you need that means you already have some salt reserve in your body so let's assume you have like a i don't know just randomly saying five 500 mg you have a salt reserve so you have 2000 mg deficiency is going to take place in full marathon okay mm -hmm. if you take the goose and the gate rates and all no if you look at the list it is like very low number i'm talking about the 30 20 30 40 mgs that's pretty much it so even if you use 10 goose okay you are getting gate rates everything included 400 500 mg is out or in other words, 15 m 1500 mg is still deficient right now in your body even with this absolutely simple math each salt tablet i think is 150 mg if i'm not mistaken the one the blue blue the one that i have put in our website is 150 mg if i'm not mistaken so that's like 10 10 salt tablets then okay so i am saying even with that 10 means what you are looking at every the, the, every uh, station 2 mile station if you have then first 10 stations you need to have up to 20th mile but i am saying take about anywhere between 6 to 10 8 10. so you are never getting into the point being you are never getting into over salt scenario at all if you take eight if you take eight tablets there is no way you will get into the over salt scenario even if you get it there is no problem but you are not getting there anyway i just told you the math eight salt tablets along with nine to ten gels and your normal supply of whatever no, drinks you are nothing will happen Ma mathematically it will not add up to the 25 mg 2000 this is when you are a five hour marathon if you're a six-hour marathon, you are even more salt efficiency requirement is there. So you got to adjust it according. Okay. Yeah. And, and how, so, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, buddy. Sorry, how much water with every tablet? Just take a swig of it. Just, uh, you know, normally also, guys, by the way, guys, do not go around just drinking, gulping tons of water. Uh, you know, there is that other side of the equation, right? If doc some doctor is there, he'll tell me the, the right name for it. Like over water is also a problem because it dilutes the sodium quite a bit, you know. So it's just one swig every two miles. Just take and keep going. Uh, you will be good there. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the salt, in case people have not listened to any of my messages, not listened to anything, which I hope this fantastic crowd is not, not a single person in there. But in case there is that one person who doesn't, who is asking this question, but who has this question, but never asked, why am I taking salt tablets? What is the need for salt tablets? The simple answer is this, you know, and coach answer, a medical answer could be something different. When salt goes down, the signal from brain to the various nerves that are needed to be activated for activating your muscle, that signal is not passing through the nerves properly. That's what actually happens physiologically. When that happens, you know, the muscles which are supposed to contract and expand when you're running, it doesn't get that nerve muscle signal. So it doesn't do the contraction and expansion. When it doesn't get the contraction expansion properly and brain is asking you to run, it'll send a lot more signal. Let's say five units of signal is required for you to do the contraction and expansion because the five units are not reaching, reaching the muscle. It'll send you 10 units, 15 units, 20 units. Till it reaches the five units reaches. But because of this overdose of electrical impulse that is coming from the brain, no, sometimes more electrical signal comes to the mu muscle, sometimes less will come, and that is cramping. That is cramping at the end of the day. This uh, miss, uh, what is the right English word for it? Like this imbalance of electrical signals reaching the muscle because of lack of salt causes cramps. And that's why you will see salt deficiency creates cramping at mile 18 and 19. That's why to your earlier question, Nilima, you know, my 11, 10 and all yeah. is okay by the time the salt deficiency. Okay. So you don't get the cramps that much. Okay. So this is what we are trying to hit in a very scientific manner. We are trying to hit this. Even if you don't understand any of these things or even don't want to understand any of these things, all I'm saying is just take salt tablets so that you won't get cramps. That's it. Simple messaging for you and we are good to go. Thank you. Uh, hello, Coach. This is Reshma. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, Rishma. Uh, hi, Coach. So I was planning to take every two miles. So mm -hmm. that's about 10 uh, salt tablets. So yep. there's no need to adjust on ba based on how I feel. I just stick to this. Uh, this should be good. Yeah, I feel this should be good. You know, yeah, more okay. than SBA too much. Take 10. Because I took up to eight, Rishma. Okay. okay. I think you and I will have the same uh, sort of timing also, full marathon timing. So. Okay. I think 10 should be really good for you and you've trained really well as well. And I can't wait, by the way, to see you guys on the other side of uh, <laughs> the finish line. You Thank you, Coach. Thanks.
ठीक है Any other uh, comments, questions? Hi, Coach Bala, Ravanpreet here. Uh, Coach Bala, what is the best way to carry these salt tablets in a small yeah. Ziploc bag? Correct. So okay. I don't know how you guys are comfortable with and all that. I do this uh, this pouch, no, the what do you call hip pouch? That's what okay. I have for all my full marathon, not for anything else. I have it for my extra spare battery, like the the, the power bank. Because as you know, I write uh, college essays when I'm writing, when I'm running, right? <laughs> so I tweet, I take pictures, I do so many things. Uh, that's why mm-hmm. I run. So my battery goes away. So I always have this cable. I have this uh, on the pouch, all these gels, all these salt tablets. That's how I do it. I find I'm very comfortable. Some people who are not used to it, yes, you can just have a small Ziploc bag, put the medicine and put it in your pocket and just go. Okay. With it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Make sure though, just uh, again, another rookie mistake I've seen. The Ziploc bags, when you are, uh, I saw one one person with that Ziploc bag, no, when you're running, they just open it. And because of running also, no, the Ziploc bag opens and this whole thing spilled out of the Ziploc bag. Oh. They get tired also, right? So, and then that person, poor, imagine like hundreds of runners are running and you have salt tablets running around the, <laughs> on the ground, <laughs> picking it up one by one. It was a disaster for, no, for that runner, but for everybody around. Who will expect suddenly somebody is bending down and you know crawling on the road and picking up the salt? <laughs> you know, so she became a pain in the, uh, the rear end for many people on that area. So my suggestion is, think, uh, uh, think uh, operationally. You know, whatever yeah. you're doing, make sure that you don't create it more difficult for you at mile 16, not in mile one when you are all tired and exhausted. At that time, it needs to be easy for you. Okay, thank you. On yes, that note, I think maybe also a good idea to carry a few extra tablets, right? Like in yes. case you spill one, then rather than feeling 100%, that. Hundred percent, dude. Once it happened for me also. I mean, as a rookie mistake, I took one gel. I didn't realize I took one gel and the remaining seven gels fell off because I forgot to close the zip of my <laughs> of my what do you call uh, pouch? Uh, yeah, pouch. So come fourth mile, and these are critical mistakes. Fourth mile, I see the pouch is empty. <laughs> So oh, I was screwed that man, that uh, that race I was screwed. So anyway, these are all things we will learn. I just said, right, there will always be challenges. <laughs> we can't plan for everything. Just that we just keep calm, keep going. We'll try to reduce the challenges and then let's party on the other. Okay. But talking of parties, what's the plan for uh, post race? Are we meeting? Uh, I would love to come and join you guys if there is something happening. Yeah, we are meeting coach. Uh, still, uh... Still, we are deciding, uh, you know, but we de- definitely we are meeting. Yeah, I mean, we should uh, have it, uh, have the uh, final plan ready by Friday. Okay, let me know. I'll be unfortunately not here right now. So I heard Coach Indu is going to come and join you guys, and uh, maybe she want to. She wants to sort of pace few first time full marathoners in the twentieth to the twenty fourth mile or some things like that. I think there is some plan going on there. So hopefully you will see many of our coaches join you guys. I would love to be there, but I had to go to North Carolina for a friend who is having a milestone birthday. So I'll just do that. And first thing in the morning, Sunday, I will drive to wherever you guys are meeting and then uh, meet all of you. Sure. Sure. Uh, Coach, one question, one question I have is, you know, uh, in the Jersey Marathon, we don't, the sports drink that we have is this uh, power bar isoactive, which I mean, I don't know how many people have even heard about it, right? So uh, the, the the thing is, you know, to keep away from it because that's not tried, right? I mean, I don't know whether it tastes like get rid or whatever <laughs> that is, right? So what is like uh, the best way? I mean, you, so we need, I mean, I, I am used to sports drink, right? I'm used to Gatorade in my long runs. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was planning to take a few pouches. So Coach Abhishek actually suggested that, you know, you can take these uh, ready-made pouches that you get right. of Gatorade, right? And then make your own Gatorade, refill, <laughs> refill your bottles at... Right and make your own gate raid, and 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 do that right. So that's that's basically what uh, what I was planning. I mean, but you, uh, I mean, um, so we still st- stay away from this. Uh, never tried. Uh, sports okay. drink, right? Especially if your stomach is very sensitive and you know that it has happened in the past where you change something and then you suddenly have uh, stomach issues and all. If you are in that, like, see, in my case, I can take any drink, so I have never had that problem. But I've had runners okay. had the similar issue. They do that. There is also another possibility, something lighter could be noon tablets. If nothing is there, you take 10 noon, five noon tablets along with the salt tablet and just like, uh, you know, plug it into one of the water and just drink, uh, you know, while you're running only. So that is also gives you the electrolyte that is needed. Uh, so you're good to go there. Taste nothing. You, you guys, I'm assuming by now you all would have done noon tablets before. So should sure. not be there. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, cool. So that is it. I don't want to uh, extend this for too long. It's 8.30 for you guys. Um, but guys, just want to leave you with only a couple of thoughts. I am very, very, very proud of all of you. Okay. Make sure that you know that. Secondly, make sure that the 35 of you guys somehow are in a current events to meet each other. It's very important to meet each other. Don't come, finish your race and go home and sleep. That's the worst thing you can do. That my might as well do a virtual race for that. Why do you even want to come to a new, you know, this kind of an event? So I hope Anand and others have uh, created some ways in which you guys sort of at least meet at the start line or something. Uh, the t-shirts are already there in Mona's uh, room house. So maybe that's another way, like uh, wear the same t-shirt and be a proud uh, runner's eye uh, runner and run with those t-shirts. It can be any form and maybe take a picture with all of you with the red color uh, running for this. Those are all kind of pictures for... Uh, that can be in memory for a very long time. So ensure that you do all do that. Uh, then once you finish the race, don't just run away. Make sure you wait and support the rest of the folks who are going to join uh, you on the finish line. Very, very special. People will remember you for a very long time. As they say, when you do something great, people will remember it. But when you do something great at the time that matters, people will remember and love you forever. That is the difference. Okay, so not just doing great work, but timing for doing great work is more important. And the timing is at the finish line and not at the end of the evening congratulating that person. Okay, so with that thought, good luck. Very proud of you. Let's make it happen. Fit Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ananji, for creating this meeting. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks Anand, Thank for arranging this. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.